All right, you guys. So we're going to get into a topic that uh, has been sparked by the Riley strain situation. And we have covered this topic before, and we're going to cover it again. Um, I want it to be a loose conversation talking about, you know, some of the background reasons why I feel like that is an area that uh, we haven't really dug into a whole lot yet is the who it could be right because we don't even know if it is legitimate yet uh even though there are some very strange circumstances and situations revolving around it uh riley Strain's situation we just heard of um was a great opener for this and some of the questions but uh over the past 20 years, hundreds of college-age men across the U.S. have died as a result of undermined or accidental, dr undetermined or accidental drownings. Uh, while many believe their deaths are just that, accidental, former NYPD detectives Ken and Kevin Gannon, Michael Donovan, Anthony Duarte, and Professor of Criminal Justice Dr. Lee Gilbertson are convinced that most of these drownings are homicides. So we went through some of the smiley face, potential smiley face killings, homicides, or victims in one of our previous video. This one, you know, I just wanted to do a, a brief reminder of it. One of the main ones that's connected with this theory is Dakota James. And Dakota James is uh, the one that was missing, I believe, for like 70 days. Uh, and there's 24 days unaccounted for. What I mean by that is that his body only looks like it had been in water for X amount of days, for like 50 days or for like 40 days or and whatever. That's what I'm curious about in the Riley case too. Like does Riley strain look like he's been in the water for two weeks or does he look like he was just put there like a few days ago? Right. Right. Then you have Tommy Booth who was 24. Um, walked into a bar security cameras covering the bar walked into a bar and is never seen again was never seen walking out. Does that mean there's connection with, you know, bar workers? I, I don't. And know. this is the same bar the other guy was at? No. Oh, no. None no. of these are the same bars. Okay. Um, Lucas Homan um, disappeared in September 29th, 2006. This has been going for a long time. Todd Gabe. 22, uh, missing June 12th, 2005. William Hurley, 24, uh, October 8th, 2009. Brian Wel Welgen, January 1st, 2000. Um, we, if you guys want to, and there's a map of each of these victims, um, if you guys want to know more about more people, we have shorts, we have case studies that we've covered. We've covered this, I wouldn't say super extensive, but we've covered it a few times. Um, and I want to dive back into it because with the Riley Strain situation, so many people are talking about, is this a smiley face killing situation? You know, um, those of you that haven't seen any of that, those previous videos, what we're talking about is these two officers. Okay. Kevin Gannon and Michael Donovan. Well, Anthony Duarte and Dr. Lee Gilbertson believe that college age men across the country. Okay. Coast to coast with very specific targets like hotbeds in major cities like Austin, Texas, like Chicago, uh, like New York, like Boston, like Pittsburgh. These bigger cities get hit the hardest, but they believe that this is a group of serial enders or um, homicidal people in a cult. They don't know exactly what it is, but they believe these people found each other on the internet. 
they believe that they came up with a smart enough plan to not be detected, right? Because each of these have been claimed to be accidental drownings. All of them accidental drownings. When you look at the statistics between men and women around accidental drownings, it is insane. It is like 25 to 1 or something like that. I need to pull mm -hmm. it up. Maybe it'll be scrolling across string screen now. Um, but I have a very interesting piece of new evidence. And I do want to talk about the Riley strain situation because, you know, we never want to come off disrespect, disrespectful, but we have some very weird questions, right? Uh, like Riley strain. So his bank card was found in an area that was already cleared. Was it found in an area that someone could have been running by and been like, I need to get rid of this. You know, it has an RFID chip that uh, with the right technology, it could be picked up, you know. And it was um, fairly clean. It was clean. It was clean. Um, it was, was found in a hard to get to area, too. Yeah. Could. uh very dangerous area. So, I mean, unless he Riley went climbing around that big steep incline and for some reason tried to take his card out of his pocket, um I don't know how it ended up there or if when he fell like people are saying, "Well, when he fell in, maybe it fell out of his pocket." Like, didn't he have a wallet? Like just one random card fell out of his wallet? That doesn't make a ton of yeah, sense. Yeah, it it is really, really strange. Now, another piece is he was only found five miles from where the believed entrance point into the water is. Now, Malia shared a graph of the water levels. If you look at the lowest point, they dropped the water level trying to find Riley Strain uh, less to a, it was lower than a foot. A foot. Mm hmm. You guys. So, like, how is it possible he wasn't found? Exactly. And it was he was found in an area five miles away that had been looked over probably a hundred times, driven through over a hundred times by people. So, is it possible in this case that he was dropped later? I don't know. Now, I don't know about lower than a foot. That's oh, then I was comparing the uh, you were looking at the velocity. Yeah, I was chart. looking at the velocity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so right, they you're dropped right. it to about 17 feet. Yeah, for yeah, that's the that measurement is uh, about 17 the, is a 17 and 18 is a, is like the lowest that it got. Mm hmm. Yeah, below 18. Which yeah. is pretty pretty low. It is. It is. It is. He would have to be literally sitting at the bottom connected because to something. I'm glad you caught that. When he um, fell in, he it was about 25 feet. Right, right, right. And it's it's interesting to understand that as they shut off the water or lowered the water, that water would have had to have gone somewhere, which so should increase the likelihood of him going down the river, which ended which isn't what happened. He he stayed there. Even though the water was higher than normal, if he, even though the uh, um, the speed of the water's flow was higher than normal, even though everything was higher than normal, he literally stayed where you would have expected him to travel in an hour, in an hour, not 14 days. If, if he was even in the water. Yes, so, if he was even in the so water. So what right. if, going a little well, conspiracy uh, here. Hang what? on, we got to describe... For our new watchers, oh, okay. what the what the theory is. So don't forget what you're thinking right there. But the smiley face killers, okay, based on everything that we can find with research, what what's a, what ends up happening or what the theory is is that uh, these men, for some reason we don't know why, um, get drugged. They get targeted, okay, and then they're picked up by what some people claim to have witnessed this themselves, but a two-car group, one of them being a van. It's been white in some cases. It's been black in other cases. But they pick up this guy. Hey, do you want to ride? Um, and he ends up getting in. They end up taking him because he is drugged and had been drugged. Um, and then they end up waterboarding this person 
to end his life and throw them in the water, but they believe they torture them um, with waterboarding, essentially drowning them, bringing them back to life, drowning them, bringing them back to life, drowning them, bringing them back to life. And they're usually um, drugged with GHB, right? And they're usually drugged with GHB, but that, that drowning we don't know how long that goes on. There have there's been speculation with like one of the guys, the Dakota James, where the they believe there's 24 days unaccounted for. So was was he alive for 24 days being abused in this way? It it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because you have guys in here. That you know, one of them one time was a uh, was Navy, a very strong st swimmer, one of the strongest swimmers ever, uh, at least strong enough to. I don't know if you guys have ever watched like Navy training videos, but it's pretty rigorous swim training, like really hardcore. Um, so, I mean, you're on a boat, you know, you got to be able to to swim your way out of things. Uh, but he, uh, they claim he drowned. You know, so, um, but anyways, they think they torture them, waterboard them, or drown them in a river after holding them hostage for who knows how long, who knows why, who knows anything. No money's ever taken from these guys. Nothing's ever Yeah, they're taken. never robbed. Yeah. Never. Yep. Um, but they're found dead with GHB in their system um, and circumstances that are just unexplainable. Okay. Uh and some of them, there is additional damage. Like there's been one guy that had damage to the back of his head, another one that had damage on his shoulder. And I have very interesting information we'll get into soon. But what were you saying? So um, one thing I forgot to mention in the Riley video is the last piece of footage. Um, the last piece of known footage where he was seen has not been released to the public. His parents saw it. They described a little bit from it and essentially said he was running. And this was from the Woodland Bridge to the James Robertson Bridge in downtown Nashville. And he was jogging again, running from what we don't know. And again, there was that black car following him, at least people think. So going with the smiley face killer theory, and that's also where his debit card was found. What if the reason that footage hasn't been released is because there is some type of evidence of foul play on it or something that could potentially be? Maybe. And what if he was abducted and he threw his card out like last minute thinking like, oh, I need to mark I was here. It could be, you know, you know, and threw his his card out like somebody will find it and they'll find me or you know what I mean? Or the type of people that do this taunt police and they insert themselves into investigations. Or it could be like guys. that. So like. Did the was this person helping search for him and put the card out there? You right. know what I mean? Expecting um, it to be found, knowing people were gonna search there. I or... would hope that they would fingerprint it. Um it it would be interesting to find out, and I'm not trying to cast blame or anything. It would be interesting to find out if the people who found it picked it up with their bare hands or if they used something to be able to fingerprint it and see if there were fingerprints on it. Uh, oh, we'll that would pull be up the video. There's a video of it. We can uh, find out. We can see. I don't remember right now off the top of my head, but cue video. You'll yeah. see. Um, but uh so it it would be interesting to know these details uh, around that because, uh, you know, it, if this theory is real, the, the, there's got to be some kind of movement on it. Now, you know, the officers or these four people that are like the heart of this theory have said that they found the dark web room that the smiley face killers, right, nationwide uh, join. They said they found it and saw it firsthand and got in. They realized, like, who the heck are you? And and kicked him, removed him, changed their uh, address or something of that nature. Yeah, because there's officers who are dead, police officers, investigators who are dedicated to this theory and trying to prove it. Yeah. And yeah, he's claiming he found a dark web room yeah. that they all talk about doing these things, which is pretty crazy. Like, is this happening all over the country? Because it's not just one, it's many in all mm. different cities. And who are they? And why would they all 
support each other in doing something like this and not tell on each other. Yeah. Like, why would they all do that? And yeah. why all young male college age victims right. drugged at a bar? Why? I don't know. I don't know. Here's uh I it sounds very, insane. It does it sounds wild, but you know, I have a couple questions here. So there's this idea out there, and and these character profiles have been built around the 60s, 70s, 80s when serial killers were running rampant, you know. Um, but there's this idea that they run solo. They're lone wolves. They don't bring anybody else in on it. I, there's quite a bit of evidence out there that shows that there have been times where they've overlapped. They found each other. They have en ended people together and things of those nature. Now, I wonder if, sure, that is probably true um, before the internet was a thing. Right Now, with the internet a thing... Uh, are these people able to find other killers and more easily connect to where they're able to share their stories, you know, and share the way to end yeah. somebody without getting caught by water? Drop the body in water. Because water ruins all evidence, you guys. Everything. And GHB disintegrates, and it's not a, it's a specialized test that they don't routinely test for. And we're seeing it in every case of these, you know, accidental drownings. The cops, like, never think there's foul play in a drowning. It's so weird. In order, if one police station says, yes, this is a homicide. They, I think they know that opens the door for everything. And some, like these officers, uh, believe there could be like 400 plus victims to yeah. this national, international, uh, cult, whatever you call it. I, I don't know what you would call it, right? Um, but, uh, <laughs> through my research, um, I found this video here though, which is super interesting. So I'll give you the background real quick for you so we don't have to uh watch all of it it's it's like three hours and i will link it in here it's by bad brain podcast um and uh this kid went to a celtics game and uh he lives in boston and he came out after the game okay and had to go to the bathroom he was parked in a place where there were police cameras i think it was in the back of like some kind of police station or or something like that so because he was parked in a police station he didn't want to whip it out and go to the restroom so he went down to the river to try to hide himself and uh the next thing he remembers is waking up in an ambulance okay now there were two people that were also walking and one of them was a young kid and heard yelling heard him yelling like help something okay shouting this kid looks at his dad takes off running to the river and when he comes up to the river he sees him in the river and another man the man sees that guy and like oh help me you know bring him up so the theory is, and this kid was saved. He had an injury in the back of the head like he had been hit. Uh, he has no idea how much time he was over there, anything like that. Uh, but the embankment is forward. So, like, he should have been falling forward if it happened. And if he did fall, how did he hit his head and his shoulder? He had a scrape. And in, that would have to be two impact points separately. OK, what makes more sense is if someone hit him in the back of the head and he fell forward and that's how he got the shoulder injury. Otherwise, if you slipped and fall, right, because people have wondered, maybe he was trying to go to the bathroom, slipped and fell and hit his head. Well, no, the fall is actually right here on his shoulder. So somebody hit him. He fell forward is what it seems. And he was in the water. Now, that guy that was in the water with him helped or watched the kid revive him and left before law enforcement got there. Ugh. And we have a picture of him. 
and nobody knows who he is. This guy's never came forward. So ready? Yeah. Injury on the front and the back. So there's no way he could have fell. There is no way. It's after last night's Celtics game for a young man from Swamp Scott, the 18 year old jumping into action, rescuing an unconscious man from nearly drowning not far from the garden. NBC 10's Malcolm Johnson spoke to the man and his father tonight. I want to paint a picture of where this rescue took place. We're just outside of TD Garden, and this is where Finn Connor helped save a man's life after hearing screams for help coming from the water just across the street. At last night's Celtics game, set Swamp Scott father and son Ryan and Finn Connor. Tatum, Tatum was going crazy. Yeah, close to 40, I think. Yeah, right. close to. Joyfully walking to their car parked in Charlestown following a Celtics win, Finn heard a shout. The word drowning? He couldn't turn back from. I didn't hear the, the call out. I just, Finn sort of looked at me funny and then ran. Finn ran to the locks next to the state police barracks to find one man in the water and another trying to save him. And I run down the bank, get in the water and try to get out to them. There may be five or ten uh, feet offshore. That's when Finn helped bring the unconscious man to shore his father helping to pull him up. So I get out there, I, I, I grab his arm like this, and I'm trying to support him from on, like on his back, and, uh, and I sort of you know carry and pick him up towards the shores. The guy had one ear that looked partially ripped off, and he was bleeding from the other ear, and he had a softball-sized welt starting to, to develop on his forehead. The man lying on the ground in that photo was in bad shape, but still breathing. Once they were able to get him here on shore, EMTs were already racing down that road right here to the scene. By the time that he's really a little bit more aware of where he is, the medics are, the EMTs are coming down the, down the bank to, to help us. You can see the red ambulance lights in the picture as Finn puts his shoes on following the rescue. It was just sort of like a, sort of like an instinct. I wasn't really feeling like much. It was Not feeling much in the moment, but a feeling this father and son won't soon forget. Well, I'm quite proud of Finn. You know, he, he, he uh, instinct took over and he ran to help, which is a, a great sign. We're, we're uh, super proud of him. It feels good to help people like that, you know. Malcolm. That's pay attention there. You see the shoulder injury? He also had an ear injury right here that made it look like when he fell, he fell forward like that. And then the back of the head. Is that not crazy? Why would that guy be there? And he was there first. Oh why would he be there? Yeah, like, why is that guy just sitting there watching them save this guy? Like, what? And then here. Um, I went to, you know, go and try to take a leak and, you know, be decent about it because we were on state police property. Mm -hmm. And that was the last thing I remember until I woke up in the hospital. And the, was it like a wooded area? Was it rocky? No. Well, so there was a uh, there was a stone embankment that all, you know gradually goes down into the the Charles River right there, but it wasn't like a jetty. They were the rocks weren't jagged. If you look at the pictures, it's almost like they were pre cut. Like the slope wasn't that steep, but um, I remember walking up to that spot and I kind of had a plan. To, uh, there was like this shed that I was going to use to kind of, you know, make my way down the embankment. And if we were anywhere other than state police barracks property, I would have just, you know, gone behind a tree or opened the doors yeah. to the truck. But I was just trying to be decent and not get arrested for indecency. So you, you know? were trying to go down the embankment? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. Offense. Yeah. That makes yeah I, but I don't remember even getting to the embankment. I remember walking from the truck to the, you know, towards the spot where I was going to go. All my friends were waiting for me. Um, and then the next thing I remembered was waking up in the hospital about two and hours later. The other thing is that we want to stress here is that you were what, two beers? And nothing, you weren't shit house. You were not like, you know, wobbly and can't stand up. No. The toxicology report reflects that too as well, right? Yeah, the toxicology report from the hospital did say that I had um, little to no alcohol in me at the point, not enough to impair my balance, judgment, or um, anything like that. I I had two beers throughout the entire game. 
Uh, they stopped selling after the third quarter. I I think. Yeah, talked they to do you about that before. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They, oh, that's correct, right? Yeah, they stopped selling usually, before the yeah. fourth quarter, so right? How, how far away from, let's say, where the car was parked to the embankment? Like, so you, I assume your friends were at the car with you. Uh yeah, the, tr- the car. yeah, the truck was parked facing away from where I was going to go. Okay. Um, I'd say maybe thirty feet. So 20, close. 30. Yeah, it was very close. I I went back to where it happened a few times to try and um, find surveillance cameras or, you know, anything to get a better understanding of what happened. And when I went back, I didn't realize how close we were parked to where it happened. Yeah. It's not like I was, you know, walking far. Across a parking lot. Yeah. Even like a, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So now from this point, the be- the other thing I wanted to stress is... My first question to you was, were you missing anything like a wallet, um, your phone, anything like that? And you weren't? No. So this wasn't like an attempted robbery. Somebody tried to sneak you and take all your shit. No. My my wallet with all my cards, all my money, everything, phone, soaking wet. Um, when I had woken up in the hospital, all my belongings were there. Um, so there, it, no way it was a robbery. I didn't, you know, I had it a decent amount of cash in my wallet just in case any of the bars were charging a cover or anything like that. But it was all there when I had woken up and you're the wounds, so to speak. Right. So when you came out of the water, you obviously your left ear was split at the bottom, kind of right above the earlobe. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and you had that welt on your forehead, which could have been from falling forward. Sure. But like you guys know this, if, Somebody gets whacked right here with some. That's like somebody sneaking you with something. Somebody's got to hit you right there. You know what I mean? That doesn't right here. It does. If you fall on it, it doesn't just split like that. You just scrape it or something. You know what I mean? Like, I think what's telling to me is that he has facial injuries on multiple sides. Right. So maybe something's from the fall. Yeah. The, right. I'm saying the knot on his forehead is probably from the fall. Maybe. Yeah. I would say. I think he's somebody snuck him behind the like from behind and hit him right here. And got him with something, a black jack. I, know, I just a, can't believe on state barracks, they don't even have any type of surveillance, right? So there are a bunch of cameras on the state police barracks property. But um, when we went back the first time, um, there were some state troopers there in the morning. Yeah. And even they said that in the spot where the accident happened, there's no cameras pointing in that spot that makes sense protect your property maybe not the other i wonder how how did the the people that pulled you out of the water how did they even see you right well walkway what's going on and so there there is a walkway in between where we were parked and where i was gonna go uh use the bathroom and that whole walkway is lit up with um light poles and the game had just ended so there were i remember there were a ton of people walking through there because it's a cut through to get to another spot in the city yeah um you go through like the the charles rivers locks and stuff like that um you can cut right across um but the thing is is when i went back if you're up top and you're this happened at low tide too um you're looking down from uh the parking lot you can't see all the way to the bottom of that embankment yeah. Unless you're like right there, which even on the pathway, you can't really see all the way down. Yeah. Um, so that that kind of confused me too. And I was wearing all black, un- unfortunately. But yeah, the other weird thing too is um, there's – if you look at the, uh, the, the news kind of uh, thumbnail on that first video, there's a guy that found me first. And nobody knows this guy's name, who he is. They don't know. He he didn't give us a, a real statement. He kind of just helped and then left, mm, and nobody can weird. find Wait, this guy. Yeah, it's if you look at that that first um, news clip, it's not. So it's Finn and his dad, and then there's another guy who uh, you can see he's wearing glasses. He's kind of like older looking. Um, and I know some people like to stay anonymous and they don't want to, you know, want to be all over the news and stuff, but mm. nobody has still found out who this guy is name. And he helped he, you though. He was supposedly in the water with me first. I never knew this. Yeah, that's you didn't tell me this. Creepy. Holy shit. I didn't know this. I didn't I, know anything I, about this. Well, yeah, I don't remember going over it with you. At, Why don't you pull but, up um, the, the first news clip? Mark, can you uh, do that? Can I? Uh, yeah. Hold Just on. let's look at it. See what, what he's talking yeah, about. I'm trying to get it. That up. is interesting. That's I'll say really, that's very that's interesting. Very interesting. That's that's a whole. So your buddies are in the truck. Yeah. That you say you're gonna go 
you're going to go take a piss. You mm-hmm. go down to the embankment or towards the embankment. That's the last thing you remember, right? Yeah. I don't even remember like walking down the embankment or So then you're in like there that. for like a minute and a half. You probably, whatever. So maybe that 10 minutes is even shorter than, than they think. Yeah. And then um, Finn and the father are the second people to find you, correct? So the first correct. guy finds you, he's in the water with you. Yeah. And then Finn, maybe he wasn't able to bring you out. Is that what he's tr- they're trying to say? Well, I see. I um, I actually got to FaceTime Finn and his dad uh, yeah. about a week ago, and Finn kind of told me what he remembered. Um, there was a guy. That guy was already in the water with me, like five, ten feet out. And Finn immediately went in with his shoes on um, and helped pull me up, you know, onto the rocks. Unreal haircut on that kid, uh, by the way. Did you see that? Did you meet that kid? Like, did you see him? Like, get a good look at him yet? Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, a that's a guy who saved somebody's life at some point. That kid's haircut. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Why, he's got some nice flow. Got he's got like lettuce. almost like a mini Johnny Bravo thing going on. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, the kid's legit. He like he was built to save somebody's life. Well, and, so it's just, and with the name like Finn, you know, he's not yeah, afraid 100%. to go in the water. Oh no, that kid's uh, that kid's ready to go. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm kind of interested about this I'm guy. Trying to, to be I'm honest. trying to find this. This guy is now the biggest person of so interest d- in this whole thing, by the <laughs> way, whether he likes it or not. I don't care. Like this maybe, is going right maybe, on TikTok maybe, later, by the way. What, maybe it was the guy. Maybe you think he, he was in the he, middle of it? Maybe he hit you and then realized, noticed, noticed that other people seen him and was like, oh, he, All right, oh so if I'm we, helping. Are we assuming, so we're going to go under the, the work and dairy right now that someone tried to to kill Josh over here, right? Was that was that the work? That's, I mean, I mean, I know that's like a like? that's a, a leap here, no, but let's just use that right now, yeah, hypothetically. I, so he's in this water with a random guy, five to ten feet out. It looks like he's helping him, but he could also be drowning him. Who knows? Yeah. Finn comes over, starts to come in the water, and then he's like, "Oh yeah, I tried to help him, but why would he stick around? Why would he stick around to be on the news cameras? Well, I guess he could just say he was helping. He was helping." To, to even I don't hate it. His, I don't hate it. To even further his. Life. I don't hate it. <laughs> yeah. So they're just looking at what we just looked at. It's but like, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Does he talk about the the hit on the back of the head? D- yeah, in here he does. Yeah, okay. that's how I know about it. Okay. He has the injuries in the front and injuries in because the they back. said he had a softball sized lump on the front. He, correct. Yeah. Like on and, the front of his and forehead. And both ears bleeding. And both ears bleeding in one ear almost looking like it was ripped off. Yeah. So that is evidence enough. But he also had an injury in the front. He has an injury in the back. But how would both ears bleed? I mean, I'm, getting hit in the head, right? No. No. How that's, would your ears that's bleed? That's superficial injury. That's a superficial injury. Yeah. I'm thinking some of the ears, your ears could bleed. Um, and so he. Is it like him grabbing his ears? They, like So one grabbing? thing that you find out in here, it could be that he's trying to get hands off of him if he's being held underwater. Because ears can be ripped or, off from grabbing them and pulling. Or and, something like that. Or that guy was holding his ears. That's what um, I'm saying. That guy was holding his ears. But they. Uh, to throw away the, oh, well, he was just drunk and, you know, he, he slipped, something happened. So they tested his blood alcohol limit and he was under the driving limit. He uh, he only had three drinks and Celtics stopped serving after the third quarter. And he talks about that in here. Was he drugged? Uh, No. 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 But. Weird, right? Yeah. It's could, pretty weird. Could this guy have just been out and about and saw an opportunity? Oh, look at this kid in this dark area taking a leak and whoosh. thinking he just left a game, so he's probably drunk already. Probably wasted. Yeah, why else? He makes he's he makes a comment that like I know some people want to stay anonymous. That does you what you don't stay around and give your information to the point where he reached out to the cops to try to get his information. He can't No, no, nothing of the guy was that guy in there helping. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Hmm. And goes back to the theory that there's some kind of obsession with the smiley face killer theory where it it's water 
Is it water because it's untraceable or is it water because it's some part of some ritual? Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. But it's interesting. And uh, it, it, it makes me wonder the why behind it. And that's my big question here is why. And I want to go into what some of the theories are. You know, there are people out there who had made claims that saw uh, there's another guy out there that claims for multiple weeks he was followed by a black truck and a van. And this guy's on TikTok, okay? Um, and multiple times when leaving the bar, they asked him if he needed a ride. He never took a ride from them. And he started connecting dots and was like, wait, could this be related? To, to all the people going missing in Chicago, this guy's from Chicago. Um, other people have claimed that, you know, there was one guy who ended up dead because he was drugged at a bar. And this is somebody we covered in our first videos. He called his friend and said, like, oh, I'm so cold. I don't know where I am. This, that, and oh, the other. Yeah, his yeah. friend came to get him. Okay. Saw a van and an SUV where he was walking to. But when she yelled his name, he turned and came to her and he was found safe. And you know what happened? A week later, he was gone. And you know what happened? Accidental drowning. Yeah. It's not possible. And it's strange. Why aren't we looking into the possibility of this being true? Law enforcement, oh, no. why aren't you looking into the possibility of this being true, but keeping it secret? Like, at least look into it. You know right. what I mean? Without giving the parents hope or anything I think like it would that, take look into it. Yeah, it would take the FBI at this point. It would have to take um or secret service or marshals or anybody any federal agency that it would be willing to look into this. Um they need to. Like it, it, that's what it would take because it spans so many states and so many years and so many victims. Um they would need somebody like the that. The running theory is it's a guy and girl, not running. The theories out there is that it's a guy and girl couple. The girl reaches out to these guys, asks if they want to ride. The guy's waiting there and they take advantage of him and, you know, abduct them and uh, waterboard them over and over. And I, I don't know why or if there even is a reason why. Maybe that's just the demographic because it fits not getting caught the easiest. I don't know. There's also a theory out there that it's all women that, uh, and I do feel like this is a little sexist, but it, because there's no evidence to it, but there's this theory out there that it's a women cult, you know, that have been hurt by men in their past. No evidence to that. So I, I just feel like that's strange. Is it possible? Sure. Anything's possible. But like, just because it's men doesn't mean it has to be women that have been abused by right men you know right. what i mean i don't right. know it i don't know who knows maybe it is though i i just don't know uh without evidence i feel like that's a big stretch you know um but uh i'm curious the why drives me you know and i've talked about this a million times before that uh you know i'm a survivor of uh a a, a child abuse situation from when I was younger. Um, and I know that stuff like that sticks with you. So could it be that these people pass their, uh, aggressor onto these men and, you know, they're just taking it out over and over again. I, I don't know. I can understand the connections of why somebody could want to do that if they didn't get through their trauma in a healthy way and be open about it and take all the power out sure. of that. Uh, traumatic situation, you know? Um, but I don't know. I just don't know because there are so many questions. And if this is real, like whoever this is, whether it's one person, a bunch of people, whatever, it is the most genius. And it makes me nervous always saying that like this just because if it is real, but it is the most genius plan ever. Ever. Genius doesn't 
necessarily mean positive no. or good. <laughs> right, right. But it is genius yeah. because they're doing it in a way that they know all evidence gets flawed and messed up. They know, maybe they don't know this, but police don't go through any training. They go through days and hours worth of gunshot wound training and and trauma response training and and all they need more trauma response training but uh they go through hours of this this research training and management you know how much water based evidence they go through training none so cops get to a body and most time have no idea what to do with it jeez when it's in the water Hmm. They don't test for GHB. They don't test the soft tissues and dissect like random body parts to see if it's damaged. They don't do any of that. Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, let me know what you guys think. And uh, interesting, right? Very.